Okay, I want to talk about isolation transformers here and why not all isolation transformers are equal. Um, try about my crude drawings here, but I'm trying to illustrate the point here, and I've got a couple of different schematics here. So this represents your utility transformer. You got your primary circuit, you got a ground, uh, and there's a ground at every pole. Here's your utility transformer. And typically what they do is they'll have your, your primary will be connected to the primary winding of the transformer. The other side of that primary winding is connected to the neutral, which is also connected to earth. And then you've got your secondary windings, your, your neutral, and your two line one and line two. That's connected to your, your house. Now your house also has its own independent ground on it. But the, remember that the neutral is tied to ground at the utility pole, as we can see on this schematic here. So this more represents a schematic diagram. Here's your pole. Your primary 14 kilovolts is coming into the primary side. The other side of that winding is tied to the neutral line, which of course is tied to ground. And then you've got your center tap, which is tied to neutral line one and line two to your 120 volt uh, split uh, that feeds your house. So between line one and line two, you have 240 volts. Between line one and neutral or line two and neutral, you'd have 120. Some type of, some isolators are what they call isolation transformers, which really aren't isolation transformers. Here's how it appears on your electrical plug. The larger uh, prong is the neutral, the smaller one is the line, and then you've got your ground prong. So some type of, some three prong grounded isolators, this is how they are internally wired. You've got your line going into your primary, and you've got your neutral going into your primary, and you've got your ground bar, which grounds the metal chassis for the uh, for the, 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 the cabinet for the isolation transformer. And then you've got your plug, and your plug is screwed down to that cabinet, which means that your ground prong is, is continued through, your bond is through. And they, a lot of them will actually even ground one side of the transformer to the cabinet so that the neutral line is tied to ground. Now you have to remember that this ground is tied to the neutral back at the utility pole. This is not isolated in any way. This is no better than just plugging your device straight in because you are not isolated. If you are touching a ground potential yourself and you make contact with your live line here, you complete the path. And if you're hooking up your scope or any equipment, um, thinking that you're protected with this type of a setup, you're not protected whatsoever. Now, we go back to the total isolation transformer like I'm using. A total isolation transformer, there is no ground connection on the transformer at all. Here we still start out the same way, our line coming in, our neutral is referenced to ground and it's grounded at the pole and it's grounded in Canada, they have to be grounded, the electrical code specifies that uh, the multi-grounded neutral that's used in North America is grounded every 300 meters I believe it is. I'll have to check my code on that. I should know that because I work for the utility, right? Work for a utility. I climb poles for a living, so I know what to look for. Um, but it's 300 meters here in Canada for um, your bonding. So every 300 meters on the poles, there is actually a ground rod that grounds. And, and every pole that has a transformer on it as well has a ground rod that grounds and ties the neutrals all together. That's what we call multi-grounded neutral. Um, but here we go. Here's our isolation transformer. There is no reference to ground. You've got your line one going to your incoming 120 volts. And your neutral is connected to neutral, and the output itself is floating free. So it doesn't matter if you're if you're touching ground, and you touch one or the other of these terminals, that terminal will be pulled to ground. The other one will be. And if you touched both of them, obviously you would get a shock because you're, that's your completed circuit here. But from one or the other to ground you will not complete your circuit. Let's go into the shop now and I'll put that into practice. I'm going to make up a little jig and I'm going to show you. We'll use a light bulb that always tends to get people's attention. It's either going to light or it isn't. And I'll hook it up to the scope and show you that I can touch either one of them and it will not light up. Let's go into the shop. Okay, to illustrate this, what I've done here is I've connected a couple of leads directly to, this is the AC cord coming in to this television. I can connect these two leads to my AC plug. I have a light bulb here. Here's the power cord for the TV. 
I'm going to plug this into 120 volt un uh, isolated supply because I want to determine which one of these is the hot line and which one is not. So I'm going to plug this directly in. And you can see the light bulb is lighting up now. I can use my meter, put it in AC mode. I want to find out which one of these is the hot line and which one is not. So if I put my meter in AC mode, and I'll just clip one side of it onto the ground for my scope. There's the ground probe for my scope. And when I touch one or the other, it's going to read 120 volts. There, that's the neutral side there because it's reading 0 0.4. So this one here is going to be the hot side. Okay, there it is, 117 volts. What I'm going to do is I'm going to change these two around so that the red is the hot side. Now, now that we know the red wire here is the hot wire, if I plug in to my 120 volt, if I plug into 120 volts, if I measure to the red, I have 117 volts here, and if I measure to the green, I have zero. Remember, this is my scope. I'm just going to disconnect my scope here. And I'm going to disconnect the red line. The red line's got the 120 volts on it. If I touch my scope probe to here, nothing happens. Okay? That's the cold side. Now, if I take the, the hot side, remember this is hot now, and I connect it up to here. If I ground out this side, the light's going to light because we are not isolated. So I get my scope probe again, and if I touch the ground side here, it will light. Okay, this is a hot chassis. I'm doing this all in one take, so you guys can see I'm not going to do any fancy camera work. That is hot, and if, if my scope probe were to touch the red wire, I'd have major sparks. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to unplug this television and I'm going to plug it in to my isolation transformer. My isolation transformer is now running. Remember my scope is still grounded. Nothing. No light. We'll pan the camera down here so you can see. This is still the red wire nothing. If I switch to the green wire and grab my scope probe, nothing. Okay? That is how an isolation transformer protects your equipment. And just so that you guys know that I'm not, I'm not bullshitting you guys here, my scope probe here that I've got Let's put the ohms meter on here and I'll measure from my scope probe over to the center, uh, over to my outlet. So I'll connect up my scope probe to one side here and I'll just go over to the center prong and I, there you go, okay. My scope is grounded. I haven't cut the ground off on my scope. You can hear the meter beeping. Okay. My scope is grounded. That's the ground prong from my, from my scope probe. If I go over to the scope here, there it is. If I, if I stick that in there to ground, you'll see that if I disconnect that, it is grounded. I hope this clears up any confusion of people suggesting that my isolation transformer provides no protection whatsoever. Uh, the type of isolation transformer I'm running has no ground wire on it. It's a two prong uh, isolation transformer. It is totally 100% isolated from the line. There's no safer way to work on electronics than 
running through an isolation transformer. I just hope that this simple test using the light bulb and the scope proved beyond any shadow of a doubt that a two-prong isolation transformer will protect you. Now, if you have an isolation transformer that's got a third ground prong on it, what you need to do is you need to remove that ground prong from the, the, the plug that you plug in. You need to remove that so that the transformer itself is floating free. And preferably if you've got, if it's got a three prong outlet uh, going that you would plug units under test into, remove the ground prong from that as well. You want no ground connection through that transformer or through its, its body. You want your transformer to be completely floating free so that the either terminal can be pulled to ground. You want no reference from that secondary back to the utility ground or the utility neutral. Hope this clears things up a bit. Thanks for watching.